So I get a text the other day with a picture attached to it. And it's the same place that I did the uh, bee swarm capture just a f two weeks ago. And uh, he says, come on out, we got another swarm for you. So I came out and it turns out that the uh, bulldozer actually pushed over the honeybee tree. So um, I couldn't do anything when I came out because uh, the bees were just clumped up a little bit at the entrance but that was a there's pretty good sized colony in that tree so I just made arrangements to come back the next day and I said I'd cut that log open and get the bees out now the thing is I haven't done a cutout in a while I've caught a lot of swarms lately I always catch a bunch of swarms every year maybe 10 or 20 but I haven't done a cutout in a while so I figured, well, this would be uh, a good place to start. So I got my chainsaw and uh, packed up my uh, BVAC the night before and headed over to the construction site that morning. So here's uh, that morning. And what we needed to do is uh, I needed some time to get these bees out of the tree. And they needed to work because they're on the clock and they can't stop their equipment. So I asked the one fella if he would come over and lift up on that log a little bit and I'd cut out the section with the bees in it and ask if he would just please move that somewhere out of their way so I could work and save the honeybees so uh, they agreed to do that so here you see that's what we're doing is we're getting ready to cut that section it's probably it was probably about eight or nine feet long and there was two holes in the tree So we took the uh, bee log over to a safe place where we could work out of the way of the bulldozers and uh, put it on some 4x4s so that uh, if we needed to roll it a little bit we could. Sorry for the shaky video. So after we got the log into position, the first thing I needed to do was uh, vacuum the bees that were on the outside entrance. So they had a generator on the construction site. They let me plug my shop back in. So I had about oh, 200, almost, well, I, I had 200 feet of extension cord. I only needed about 120 and uh, plugged in and uh, just started to vacuum. And uh, everything went really well, but the thing about vacuuming bees is you can't rush it. You just have to take your time and do it so you don't, you know, kill the bees. Um, and you have to be careful of how much suction you have. So it's pretty easy to do, uh, but you want just enough suction that it lifts the bees gently off the surface. So 
it's it's not like um, you could take the shop back and pick up nails with it it won't have that kind of suction so you have to be nice and easy when it comes to honeybees now after about maybe five or to ten minutes of vacuuming I got most of the bees off the main entrance So I made my first cut with the chainsaw just about four or five inches below the lower entrance. And as soon as I opened it up, I could see the uh, bottom of the comb. So I lit my smoker and gave him a few puffs of smoke just to make sure that we could start working, opening up the log. Can you see in here? Can you see this comb right here? Yeah. Okay. So this this is the bottom of the tree hive. And I see one, two, three, four, five, six. So far I see six combs. There might be another one under this one. So what I'm gonna attempt to do is smoke the bees away from this area, maybe at about 24 inches. 30 inches. I'll try to make a, a cut here and here and just remove the top section of this log and I'm going to try not to let my blade to the saw go any deeper than two three inches and hopefully I can cut the comb out chase the bees that way we can vacuum some more but this will be a longer process than just vacuum them off the top but let's try doing that and save these bees. Okay well let's Start surgery. So I just wanted to take my time and I didn't want to sink the blade of the saw into that log so I was just scoring the surface and then just going a little bit deeper and then a little bit deeper and until it, if I felt like it was starting to poke through I would pull back just a little bit. So uh, it, it took me a little longer to do but it, it worked out and I was able to get this piece scored just enough so that I could break that first piece of log off and expose the comb. The toe of the chainsaw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So here's what's going on. You can see this has been in this tree for a long time. Um, and you can tell by how dark the comb is. And it's been there a while. When they first draw their wax, it's real light. But this, this is dark. And this has been in this tree for years. We don't know how long. But we'll vacuum these bees right here. And we'll get these off here. And I don't see any brood on this comb. So that means we don't have to save this comb and we'll just keep slicing into the uh, log a little bit further until we start seeing the brood comb. 
Yeah, this will make a good YouTube video. I yes. think this will help to boost the ratings. <laughs> Slice my tree open. Yeah. Ain't something you do every day. So that's pretty much how it went for about three hours. I cut a section of log, suck the bees out with the vacuum, um, cut the comb out, and just keep working it. I wound up cutting probably, uh, I think it was three or four sections, just like the first one. So I'll just kind of speed that up for you to save you all the boring parts. But we were cutting the comb out, vacuuming, and... Um, the odd thing was we never found any brood comb, and I have uh, oh, a theory as to why. I, I think that when I caught that swarm, uh, they called me like two weeks ago, and I got the swarm, and the queen was in that swarm, and this colony never had a chance to requeen. So the entire time that we were extracting that comb, we never saw any brood comb at all. No eggs, no larvae and no cat brood of any kind. We just found some open honey, like in this uh, picture here. There was just a little bit of uncapped honey and um, just bees everywhere. So I didn't really worry about saving the comb. I got a little bit of honey on my fingers, but you know, um, I just put them in the bee vac and took them home and set them up with a couple frames of honey that I had saved from uh, last year. Bet you never saw a hive tool used like that before. So I'm just gonna take the, I'm gonna take this piece of the log home. There's probably a hundred bees in there. Uh, I'm gonna take it back. Oh. I'm going to take it back home, set it right next to the hive where they're going to be in the bee yard. So that way we don't leave anyone behind. See in there? So I'm setting them up. I got a little bit of honey left over from last year. So I'm gonna put that in. I got an eight frame medium box. I'm just gonna stick them in there. And I'm gonna put a frame of brood with them from one of my other hives. Set that right on there. Okay, now I'm gonna go get the brood set them in there and close them up and then I'm going to open the screen to let them all up in there. Okay, let me see if I can show you this. Alright, I brought out of one of my other hives, my eight frame hive. I got a capped and open brood and I got some eggs way in the corner. I'm going to put that in the center of this uh, box on top of the bee vac from our rescue. And uh, if they have a queen, that's okay. I, I don't know that they do. I have a feeling they don't. And maybe they can make one with one of them eggs. So we're going to put that in there now.
here we are. We're gonna finish them off, setting them up in their new house. Here's the, the rem remainder of the log with the entrance. And I've got it setting right in front of the bee back. And all I gotta do is pull this screen now. And these bees are gonna start going up inside. Let me show you, right here. So I'm gonna pull that screen. Is it this one? Yeah. This is. Oh, it's a little tougher to pull with one hand. I might have to set the camera down. Here comes a little bit. A little bit. There we go. Okay. All right, we'll open it up about that much. And now the bees that are in the lower section of the back are gonna go up into that heat frame box that I just set on top. That's a beat up box, man, look at that. I guess I could have had a better one than that. That's what they got, they don't know. At least not right now. So they'll go in there, they'll run straight for that brood. And we'll just let them settle down. We, we might just need to give them a day or two. And the weather looks good. So the bees that are on this log will likely... It, I, I think they're all going to just join this colony here shortly. In fact, maybe what I could do is take this cork off. That way they got a way in. There we go. Now they got an entrance. And they'll, they'll get up in that box in just a little bit here. And these bees that are on this log, I'm gonna move them closer. And they should start crawling up on there. Look at it, if I make a touch. And uh, they smell that brood that's up in this hot box here. They'll get up in there. Here. All right, bees. Welcome home. Welcome to your new home. Well, it turns out that some of the bees were homesick and they didn't want to get out of the log. So I got my tarp out and a cover and I had to bump them off onto the tarp so that they would climb up, like you see in the video here. So this was a, a big day for these bees. They went through a lot um, with having their tree house cut down and now they're all getting back together. So this is a, a happy ending to their story. Um, the bee vac went really well. Uh, the cutout went really well. So overall I'm just, you know, very pleased with the results.